let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that we may glorify your name on this special feast of the exaltation of the cross. We ask that we may always glory in all you have done for us and be filled with gratitude for what you do for us every day. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is September 14th. It is always the feast of the exaltation of the cross, unless, of course, it falls on a Sunday. And uh, it is a very special feast in the Archdiocese of Boston because the Archdiocese of Boston is the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. And the reason is because the cathedral has a relic of the true cross there and has had it there since the first bishop of Boston came here from France, Bishop Chevres, and received uh, in France a relic of the true cross to be stored, well, stored not to be held, (laughs) held is a better word, to be held uh, in the uh, Cathedral of the Holy Cross, which it is to this day. Uh, It used to be on display, and then apparently someone tried to steal it, which would be a stupid move but uh, they did try to steal it. And so now it's in a more secure place. But I'll never forget one of the most important stories for me is you had the relic of the true cross, which was on display at the bottom of a cross in the cathedral. And I was giving some Brazilians a tour, and one of them was a man who named Dunga, and Dunga was the founder of a movement called PHN, which in Portuguese stands for Por Hoje Now Vu Mais Pecar. It is, just for today, I will not sin, and it's based on the Alcoholics Anonymous uh, one day at a time idea. So the focus was uh, a whole movement based on focusing on not sinning today. Don't worry about tomorrow, worry about today. So it was a, uh, a large movement he had, and uh, it was based in Consalnova. It's actually connected to the Consalnova community, of which I also am, and uh, also is Father Adriano Zandana, if you've heard some of his material in our programming. And so um, it, it, this was him coming and visiting the cathedral because he was running a retreat that whole weekend for American Catholics who were of Brazilian uh, nationality. Either they were living here and uh, were born in Brazil, or in fact, they were from Brazilian families. And people came from all over the eastern seaboard to go to this retreat. Well, as I'm giving him a tour of cathedral, I show him the relic of the true cross. And Of course, I was stationed there, so I had the habit of, you know, saying this is here, and this is here, and this is here. And then I said, this is the relic of the true cross. He stopped. He says, that's what? I said, it's the relic of the true cross, and I explained the whole story. Well, he stopped, he knelt before it, and then he did something really interesting later on. What he did is he took, it was at the bottom of a crucifix, so he took the whole crucifix down and um, brought it to the retreat and encouraged people to come and to kiss the relic of the true cross in a way of consecrating themselves to Christ. So it was a very powerful moment that Dunga did as part of the PHN movement, por, um, oh, I can't say it in Portuguese, but anyway, I can say por hoje now, vou mais pecar. The PHN movement uh, at that retreat in the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. Another interesting story, which goes the exact opposite direction. There was, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there was an attempt to stage a coup of the Catholic Church in the United States. And it was based in one of those keep the faith, uh, change the church movements. And so one of the things they tried to do was to get people to boycott one Sunday Mass, especially at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. And they picked a date that was, I think it was September 28th. Well, it just so happens, just so happens September 14th fell on a Sunday that year. And I'm like, why, if you really understood your Catholic faith, if you really knew the faith, why would you hold a boycott at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross 
on September 28th when that was a Sunday in ordinary time when in fact if you were going to send a real message it would be September 14th the exaltation of the cross and so that was one of many clues we had that said these people were not really Catholic they were trying to change the church for political reasons and in fact we found that they were connected to one of our political parties and well the rest is history it was a fascinating thing and again it showed us uh, the power of the cross is there also to help us to understand and discern which movements are real and which movements are not and uh, so that was one of the major things from the exaltation of the cross. We're going to talk about more about this on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. We're back, and of course we're talking about the exaltation, the feast of the exaltation of the cross. And one of the important things I want to look at in regards to that is the orient, origin of that particular um, a finding of the cross, which led, to, the, of course, to the feast, is displayed in windows at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. And what it is is a woman we now call St. Helen. Uh, back then, they, she was called several things. Among them was Helen and two, the mother of the emperor. Because she was Constantine's mother. And Helen uh, wanted to, was on an excavation to find the true cross, which she eventually found in Jerusalem. And so that whole scene is depicted in the Cathedral of the Holy Cross in Boston. If you walk into the cathedral... And you'll come to, if you, you may or may not know this, but all cathedrals are shaped in, in the form of a cross. So if you go to the, the crossbar, so to speak, of the cathedral, you will see that on the windows on both sides is the depiction of St. Helen and her group that have found the Holy Cross and carry it out of, for the yeah, the Holy Cross and carry it out of uh, where they found it. And where that spot is today is called um, the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre. So all of that is rooted in that particular place right there. So you'll see that scene. Now, I had mentioned to you then when Bishop Chevres came, because Bishop Chevres was French. And always remember, the northeastern part of the United States, or the northern part, you could even say, and also Canada, were colonized by the British, but they were evangelized by the French Jesuits. There's a very interesting movie that kind of highlights that, or that does highlight that. It's called Black Robe. It's rated R because it's, it's graphic in its portrayal of what it was like back then, but they were all French Jesuits. And of course, I've told you about the Shrine of the North American Martyrs, um, about three and a half hours west of here, who were French Jesuits, Isaac Jogues and his companions. Well, Bishop Chevres was French. And the relic of the true cross, um, obviously, over the centuries, there were it's a, it's a tiny piece. It's like a splinter. So, you know, made its way. The, uh, well, let me, let me correct that, just so you understand. Hel uh, Helen found the true cross, but obviously it was split into tiny pieces as relics. There you go. So one of those relics is here in Boston, and it came from France. So it made its way to France, and they gave it to uh, to Bishop Chevres when he came here and, and began as the bishop of the then-called Diocese of Boston, eventually the Archdiocese of Boston. So, But that whole depiction of Helen finding this uh, full cross 
is the way it's depicted. Um, it, there is found at uh, in in those windows on either side of that cross beam of the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. And as I said, it is designed as all cathedrals are in the shape of a cross. Ironically enough, it should be in the shape of a chair if you think about it, because cathedral means chair. It's Latin for chair. But actually, every cathedral is shaped in in a cross. And so, um, if you were to see the Cathedral Holy Cross from uh, high up, you would see this big cross-shaped building. Which is why, when I've done scavenger hunts there, back when I was there, I would say, look for the largest cross in New England. And eventually someone would figure out, oh, we're standing in it. Yes, indeed, you are. A little bit of story about on this feast day of the relic of the true cross at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross in Boston and this feast, the exaltation of the cross. We're going to talk more again tomorrow, but in the meantime, have yourself a blessed day. And we will, as I said, see you tomorrow. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com. And you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.